<laughs> Thank you, Dr. Powell. Sure. I just returned um, from the second annual conference on nutritional ketosis and metabolic therapeutics in Tampa, Florida, okay. which was held from 1 to 4 February 2017. And it was an absolute exceptional conference which basically basically brought forth the fact that carbohydrates and insulin are really affecting all aspects of life and it was incredible listening to some of the scientific research that was brought forth during the conference how carbohydrates affect so many conditions that we are experiencing in today's world, right. from obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, epilepsy, type 3 diabetes. Type 3 diabetes. Ty it's called, they're calling it type 3 diabetes, which is dementia, Alzheimer's disease. Nice. And that is why I really encourage people to really look at the amount of carbohydrates they're taking in. And it's not to say, as we discussed before, that carbohydrates are bad, mm -hmm. that <laughs> carbohydrates shouldn't be eaten, they're a villain. That's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the fact that mainly carbohydrates are what cause the body to really stimulate insulin. Okay. And too much of the carbohydrates and the insulin lead to a lot of the metabolic syndrome conditions that we have, which then lead to a lot of the metabolic diseases that we're experiencing. So when we talk about metabolic syndrome, what we're looking at, high levels of blood glucose, blood pressure, high triglycerides, low HDL, and the fat in the middle portion of the body, which is generally referred to as fatty liver disease, if an individual has at least three of those conditions that I just mentioned of the five, mm -hmm. they are in a position where they may be experiencing metabolic syndrome. And what is making the metabolic syndrome come about? Again, it goes back to the carbohydrates, the excess carbohydrates, making the body produce excess insulin. We had a plethora of speakers folks from the exercise side of the house to the very lab-centered scientific mm -hmm. under the microscope <laughs> under the microscope <laughs> individuals yeah. and and people such as Beth Zupek Kenya yeah. from the Charlie Foundation they're working on providing diets to help these children who are experiencing epilepsy. Andre, Dr. Andreas Ianfeld, and we did an interview, and it was just so wonderful being around these different types of people at different educational levels, if you will, who embraced individuals such as myself, the layperson, who wants to know more about what is going on in the scientific community and who can take that information from the scientific community and share it with the layperson. A lot of individuals that you deal with here um, at Dr. Chris Natural Remedies, just the average person who wants to learn how to eat better. Yes. And that is why what I do is so important is. because there needs to be a middle person mm -hmm. that can share this information, yes. break it down, 
even though it may have sound a little complicated while I was talking just now. But to break it down. No, yes, absolutely. And Hands on and provide some uh, examples and um, uh, guidelines, you know, to follow exactly. because it can be overwhelming. I, I, I know a lot of people just get overwhelmed just by thinking about it. And uh, just this morning, someone told me, "I know I need to eat, lose weight. I know I need to exercise." Well, yes, you know, but that enthusiasm gets misguided, yes. and that energy becomes wasted, and sometimes often detrimental to that person That's exactly without right. them even knowing it. Being aware of it. Because the first response that an individual will generally have when you talk to them about starting to change something along their current journey to better health is they'll want to run to the gym. <laughs> and, and that is not in itself a poor recommendation mm -hmm. But if a person's in a place where they're metabolically broken, which only means that your body's just not processing what you're eating and drinking well. Mm -hmm. Until you look at that aspect of it, everything else needs to just be set to the side for a moment. And that's why I would encourage people, just walk. Walk. Do something that humans do on a, on a daily basis, or should do on a daily basis. <laughs> you know, just, just walk. Yes. But spend that additional energy that you may have looking at what you are eating. Okay. Because there are so many times, like you mentioned earlier, where people just say, oh, just, you know, eat a healthy diet or mm -hmm. just uh, only eat good during the starve week. Starve myself or something. Or starve. That is one of the worst things you can do. Absolutely. If, and there's such a thing as fasting. And Jimmy Moore, I had an opportunity to meet him. He's one of the individuals that I follow. Dr. Feynman is a great example of someone who I had the fortunate opportunity to sit down with and speak with at breakfast one morning. And he, he embraced my book, Educated Eating. He said, and I told him my story. I said, here I am, I'll be 60 this year. And I mean, I went through so many changes regarding my health, but by taking control, making a decision to do something to help myself, it didn't happen overnight. No. And it's a continuous journey. Yes, I had asthma concerns the night before I was due to fly out, and I thought I wasn't going to be able to go to the conference. But what I knew for sure, my truth, is that I am perfect health. I embody perfect health, both mentally and physically. Now, that doesn't mean that the ultimate outcome, whether I were to, was to get on the plane or not, I had control of, but what I knew for sure was that I needed to be still and allow power to work through me and to guide me. And that's what I did, and I was able to get on the plane the next day, and I was breathing fine. So it's about having the faith along with the knowledge and then moving forward on your journey to better health. That's right. That's right. And what you just spoke about is so crucial. I was just speaking with um, a prospective client. Deal with the basics what you put in your mouth, what is going on within the nervous system, which starts with the spine, the connections, the energy that you talk about, the building up, the breaking down. It's so crucial. So yes, you can go and, and have this done or have that done, or, but until you stop, and analyze what's priority number one. Mm -hmm. Start with that body. Start with the structure. I think you're onto something there. And and one of the things that you just mentioned, you said what they could have chosen and possibly lived a longer life. The word choice. We come to a fork in the road and we are in a position to choose this road, that road. The bottom line is, it is a choice. It is a choice. And it's not a good or bad choice. 
until you deem it so. Exactly. So I propose that we move away from judgment and into more of the education and the empowerment and acceptance right. of where we are on I our agree. journey to I better agree. health. Well, you know, I, it, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Now, thanks for sharing about the conference, too. We're going to um, need to follow up on that, I'm sure. Well, I learned so much from the conference, all the wonderful people who attended the conference and just embraced what I was doing at the layman level. And I, I will definitely be attending next year, and so I will be sharing what I've learned from this particular conference. And I encourage folks to further their education regarding health and nutrition, and um, it's, a, it's a process. It's not a competition. Better health is not a competition. It's a journey. And be kind to oneself. Yes. Be kind to oneself. Yes. And for you to continue the great work that you're doing, allowing me to share my knowledge with others.